Hi everyone, today we're going to see how to analyze an RCC section as per the Eurocode 2. So we're going to stick only on singular reinforced sections and hopefully we're going to do another video on how to analyze doubly reinforced sections. Now from the very first principle, we know that the forces at an equilibrium should be equal. Now we have this compressive force and we have this tensile force and for this system since it is just singly reinforced section and that we know above the neutral axis we have the compressive force and below it we have the tensile force taken by the steel we can come up with this equation we have the tensile force we have the compressive force FCC is equal to the FST the tensile force it is also very well known for the your code to users that the stress block is limited or sorry the compressive strength of the concrete is limited to 0 0.567 so that uh, this figure is taken there uh, to be a partial factor of safety there is also another limit for the steel it is 0 0.87 FYK which is the yield strength of the steel now we know that the X is the depth of the neutral axis and S is the, is the depth of the concrete stress block it is also limited to 0 0.8x we don't take the entire depth you should also know that the whenever you are using the capital F then you are referring to a force but if it's a small f then it, it is just a, a stress alright without any further delay we should just jump to the first example now here they ask us to find the to determine the ultimate moment of resistance of the section below now we are giving the yield strength we are giving the compressive strength of the concrete and they also ask to figure out whether the section will have a ductile failure mode or a brittle one now we have to figure that out so i have the area of steel i have the dimensions i have the breadth and the depth d now let's just have a look at this figure whenever you want to analyze a section you better draw this figure because it's, it's going to help you now I know that the moment whether it's the moment of resistance or any kind of moment is is simply the force times the level arm now in this case we have the level arm as the Z as it can be seen from that figure and we have the moment it can be either if you take it as the tensile force or the compressive force either way you're gonna get the correct answer they should be the same if the forces are equal then the moments should also be equal I cannot really go um, straight forward and find the moment of resistance and this is because if you check the equations uh, either sides you'll see that there is one unknown uh, well for the first one for this one there's the S the depth of the stress block and it is unknown we don't have the value of x so we cannot really uh, work it out and for the another side for the tensile force well we have everything but we don't have the z and if you just check this figure you'll see that the z is is equal to d minus s over 2 now the s is there and well we don't have any value for s so we cannot either work out the tensile force times the level arm z there's another formula that you can determine the z value but you are required to work out the k value we're going to check that in example 2 all right as i said it's better to draw the figure just put the forces there you have the compressive force is equal to the tensile force remember the force is is just the area times the stress now i can determine the s since I have all the values there they are all known so I just substitute in that equation and there I get the depth of the stress block I simply can substitute in that equation which says that the s is equal to 0.8x and then I can just um, work out the depth of the neutral axis now I'm gonna need this for later on alright so since I have the s I can determine the z it's up to you that you choose the tensile force or the compressive force times this level arm so I took the uh, compressive force so it is 0 0.567 times FCK times B the breadth times the S which we have already determined times the level arm z now the z is just D minus S over 2 
I have all the rest values and then I can just figure out the moment of resistance. 113.7 kilonewton meter is my section's moment of resistance. Now they also asked me to determine whether the section will have a ductile mode of failure and I can do that by determining the depth of the neutral axis. Now I already have my depth of neutral axis, it is 80 mm, we already found it. And in order to have a ductile failure, the neutral axis should be limited to 0.45 d. Alright, so um, just put 0.45 times the d, which is 450 in our section, and then you get the value of the limit, which is 202.5 millimeter. So our x is only 80 millimeter. It is way, way less than the limit, which is 202.5 millimeter. So what kind of failure we're gonna expect is a ductile failure. All right, now we move on to the example two. Now in this example, we are given the section. We, we are using the same section, but in this case, we are giving the applied moment. So we are giving the applied moment as 155 kN. Now remember, you are giving the applied moment. You are not giving the applied load. Now um, this, this makes it even easier. So what, do we, what, what does that mean is that if I put the load on the beam, the load will try to uh, rotate the beam about its axis and uh, causing what is called the bending moment and I already have the bending moment which is 155 as it can be seen in red and remember the moment of resistance is the moment created by the section to resist the moment applied so since the applied moment is given de determining whether the section is reinforced or not is essential so um, I do that by substituting in this formula and this is given by the euro code and it is it should be and the k value should be less than 0.167 otherwise the section will no longer be singly reinforced it must be doubly reinforced now we check we check this in our section we see that the section is singly reinforced suppose that we get the k value more than 0.167 then the section is then the section should be doubly reinforced but that is beyond our course so the section is singular force and there's no need for compression enforcement. All right, now I have the forces at the equilibrium and I have the moment. Now, unlike the previous example where we had only one unknown, which was the S, now we have two unknowns. We have the S and we have the area of steel. The only giving thing is the moment applied. All right, now we have this figure again and I'm going to make a very important assumption. I'm going to say that the moment applied is equal to the moment of resistance so that I can substitute in that tensile force equation in order to find the area of steel. And the area of steel is going to be the minimum area of steel required to resist the applied moment. So what that means is that the MR, the moment of resistance, is equal to the moment applied is equal to 155. And then I take that moment, I put it in that equation where I have the tensile force and then from there I can rearrange the equation to find the minimum area of steel required. Now the only thing is missing there is the z value. Now as I said from the previous example, we can mark out the z value by saying the z value is equal to d minus s over 2. But the thing is we don't even have the s. So it is impossible to find the z without the s value. Luckily, there is another formula that you can work out and get the z value. Now, you don't have to remember this formula. It should be given in the exam formula sheet. If you just substitute the variables there, uh, you have the d, we already have the d, and there's the k, and we determined our k value. So, we get the z as 405 millimeter. It shouldn't be greater than 0.95 d. And I checked it. It is actually less than that limit. Now I have the z value. I just simply plug in the numbers there to get the area of reinforcement required to resist the applied bending moment. Now remember that the this is the minimum area of reinforcement uh, since that we assume that the moment applied is equal to the moment of resistance. Now if you just check this table where it gives you the bar size against the number of bars and check any value near to that 879.8 millimeter square it is always safe to go for 
uh, a number bigger than that. So um, I'm taking 982. So that means I'm going to use two bars, with each with a diameter of 25. So that means my moment of resistance isn't going to be the same, because I took a higher area of reinforcement. So I'm going to recalculate the moment of resistance, and I get it as 173. But since the 173 is greater than 155, then it is OK. I am in the safe side. So my new moment of resistance is 173. So this is my trial section, as it can be seen. Now, will the section have a ductile mode of failure or not? Let's check it out. Now, I have this equilibrium equation where I have the tensile force and the compressive force. And what I need to do here is to determine the value of S. Remember, previously we had two unknowns. Now we only have one unknown, which is the S. Now I simply plug in the numbers there and get the value of S. Remember, all of us. If you are dealing with a euro code 2, then the depth of the neutral axis is always equal to the S over 0 0.8. So I put the S there and divide it by 0 0.8. I get the value of the neutral axis as 125.5 millimeter. Now remember, the limit for our section is 202.5 millimeter. And obviously, 125.5 millimeter is less than 202.5 millimeter. That simply means the section will have a ductile mode of failure. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you very soon.